we know, and uh, we try to elucidate it. Uh, and okay, so I will talk about the geography of modular space of torsion free shifts. Uh, this was the work of my PhD thesis with uh, in, with the joint work with Marcus Jardine and Alexander Tikumirov. And let's start. So uh, to begin with, I will denote by this calligraphic M, C1, C2, C3, uh, the Gieseker Mariam modular space of same stable rank to sheaves on P3 uh, with second, uh, first, second, and third turn class equals to C1, C2, C3, uh, the Wuzo thing. So I put a link, uh, so whatever, whenever you see this underline in the letters, uh, later the slide will be uh, available, so you can click and see the PDF of the paper that I am uh, citing. So uh, Mariam approved in the 70s that uh, this modular space that we are interested in a projective scheme, and also proved that uh, we have the modular space of local free shifts, which I call B, C1, C2, C3 for bundles. So the modular space of vector bundles and the modular space of reflexive shifts are quasi-projective subschemes of this modular space. Uh, so our goal here will be to understand the geometry of these modular spaces. Uh, what can we say uh, of these schemes? So then f I feel no results uh, that are understood so far is that uh, the modular space uh, of uh, vector bundles, naturally we don't have the third chain class. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we know that uh, for first turn class equals to zero, this guy is completely understood up to C2 equals five. And for first turn class odd, we know that uh, we understood this guy until C2 equals four. Uh, and we also know that the number of reducible components of both modular spaces grows as C2 grows. And we'd like to know if we can characterize or the asymptotic behavior of the growth of such reducible components, more or less as we know uh, for the Hilbert scheme of curves, for instance. Uh, for reflexive shifts, uh, these modular spaces are uh, completely understood up to C2 equals three and C3 equals six. And with odd first turn class, we know them for C2 equals three and C3 equals seven. Uh, we also know the reducibility and rationality for some extremal case of churn classes. Uh, when I say extremal, is that because uh, we have an inequality for C3 in terms of C2, and the C3 uh, reaches the upper bound, we say that this is the extreme uh, case. Uh, but we also don't know general results. And for torsion free shifts, we know even less. This guy is understood up to C2 equals 2 and C3 equals 4. Uh, but we also know that the number of reducible components of these guys grows. And there are reducible components in this modular space whose generic element is not locally free. Uh, because, OK, it's uh, obvious that the number of reducible components will, be, will grow with C2 because we know that the modular space of locally free shifts grows. Uh, but it's nice to know that we also have uh, a number of reducible components of purely torsion free shifts that also grows. And the reducibility and rationality of some extremal case uh, also is known. So what are we going to do here? Uh, first is to provide examples of reducible components in these modular spaces. Uh, so how are we gonna do that? Uh, so we start with a Corinth shift. I will denote by EV uh, the dual of the shift E. Uh, I guess it's more or less clear for everybody. Uh, so I will take a torsion free shift on P3. Uh, then the natural map from E to its double dual is injective. And we can take a, a short exact sequence of this form E. Uh, injects in the double dual, and you can take the quotient, key we, that I'm denoting here. 
Uh, so for rank two torsion phase shift on P3, we always will have the sequence, and this will be the base of we are going to work here. And the first thing that we would like to do to know is that the support of uh, of the shift QA, that is the points where the stock of the shift QA is uh, non different from zero, uh, lies inside the singular set of my shift, this point where the x to one, the local x to one is different from zero. Uh, this will imply then that the support of my shift QA is at most one dimensional. Uh, so we have the following definition. Uh, if you take a rank two torsion free shift on P3, we will say that E has zero dimensional singularities. Uh, if the support of my shift is a zero dimensional subscheme of P3, uh, we will say that E has pure one dimensional singularities if its support is a pure one dimensional subscheme. And uh, we will say that E has mixed singularities uh, if its support uh, is uh, a one dimensional subscheme, but it also contains zero dimensional subscheme. Uh, it also contains some embedded points or points outside the curves. Uh, and this definition uh, seems very uh, natural and it's nice to see, to know that this definition will help us to make a lot of computations. So uh, we will try to give explicit examples of feminine of shifts inside this modular space that could be candidates to reducible components of our modular space. So I will try here to give an idea how to do it. Uh, so how we we are going to do that. First, we fix families of subschemes on P3 to play, their, to play the role of support of my QA. And I will call this, uh, this shift Q. And I would consider families of reflexive shifts on P3 that I'm denoting just here by R, uh, that we are going to be well behaved enough uh, in order to play the role of the double dual of my shifts uh, and this well-behaved enough is in order to habilitate us to make computations with them. And I will consider also the family of all possible epimorphisms of shifts from F to Q uh, with my F fixed inside my family R. Uh, with these ingredients, I will obtain a short exact sequence. I will take my phi, my phi from my epimorphism from F to Q, I consider the kernel of this map. Uh, this kernel is a torsion free shift, uh, which I will call elementary transform of F along Q. And the, uh, these elementary transformations are the uh, main tool that we are going to use in order to build these reducible components that I am saying. So, how are we going to do that? Uh, we are going to fix e, e uh, between minus one or minus one or zero because I want to work with uh, normalized uh, torsion free shifts, and I will fix a reducible. Uh, I will fix uh, an open subset of my uh, modular space of torsion free shifts, of reflexive shifts. Sorry, uh, which are in classes E, N, and M. Uh, this open uh, will have the, the property that every shift that I take inside it will have the x2 of it equals to zero. So we know that uh, these guys will only have a smooth point inside my modular space of reflexive shifts. Uh, now, I sorry for the long notation and have notation here, but we have no choice in order to explain what I am doing. Uh, <coughs> I will consider, I will denote by P3S underline zero to be an open dense subset of uh, S copies of P3 consisting of the joint uh, unions of S distinct points. So I'm taking inside P3 uh, S copies of P3 different points and I'm considering the points of all of these distinct points. And for every shift, reflexive shift inside this modular, inside this R star that I took, I can take a PF, a set of the points inside P3 that does not intersect with the singular set of my F. 
Uh, this is possible because the singular set of our reflexive sheaf in P3 is always uh, zero dimensional. Uh, we also have uh, this uh, calligraphic XF to be the set of lines inside this Grossmannian and uh, this open dense subset of the P3S uh, that, such that the line inside the P3 does not intersect the points, the S points, and I don't want the line, neither the line nor the set of points to intersect the similar set of my F. So I'm taking the best possible situation, and I also want uh, my F, uh, when I restrict my shift to the line L that I took in the grass manual, uh, I want my shift to <coughs> have trivial splitting type on it. Uh, we know that uh, when I put everything together by Gravit Mulik, uh, this set of the shift and the set of the line and the points it took, as I said before, uh, will be an open dense subset inside the product of my modular space of sheaves, the Grassmannian, and the projective space, S cup of the projective space. Uh, and then this guy here, when I put the zero here, the product of these guys, is a smooth and equidimensional scheme, uh, meaning that every point there uh, has the same dimension, the same dimension of the tangent space. Now, if I take my R to be greater uh, than my E, I will always, uh, then I will fix a triple uh, of a shift, a line, and a set S of points. And I consider my shift Q, L, S, R, to be just the sum of the structural uh, points uh, S with uh, the structural shift uh, of my line twisted by R, then I can construct a morphism from my shift F to my, to my shift Q that I just defined. So you can see I fixed the F I fixed the line L and the points S to play the role of the support of my shift. And then I define the shift Q. I put this condition R greater or equal than E in order to be sure that I have a morphism from F to my uh, shift Q. Now I can consider the vector space of all morphisms from F to Q and I can consider uh, my open dense subset of all epimorphisms from F to Q. So this is just uh, following the receipt that I gave you before I just considered, I just put this uh, sort of complicated stuff. And then by the construction of, we just did before, uh, the group of automorphism of my shift Q acts on this vector space, on this open dense inside this vector space, and we can prove that uh, the action, this open dense subset, uh, and the action of the automorphism group on this open dense subset will give us just uh, a copy of a projective space with a lot of copies of P1. Now, for any morphisms that we take in the uh, from F to my shift Q, if we take the kernel of this map as we have defined before, and this will uh, give a it give a stable shift, and therefore this will lie in this modular space here, um, and we can compute the churn classes uh, just taking the churn polynomial and making it by hand. So uh, we also can see that uh, two shifts. Uh, if I take two epimorphisms, F and F prime, we'll have that the kernel are isomorphic. If in the leaf, we can find a G uh, on the group of automorphisms on my shift Q, uh, making a diagram commute. So we have that uh, phi must be a composition of my G and, of my, G and uh, my phi prime. If I denote uh, the equivalence class of uh, any epimorphism uh, by three bracket in between brackets, uh, and we can consider this scheme, this ugly scheme here, uh, till the key, till the key 
uh, in which I'm taking the, <coughs> I consider a point inside this guy to be just uh, my shift, the equivalence class of my shift, reflexive shift, and uh, my line and my points define as they uh, they don't intersect. Then uh, this set will be endowed to take structure with a smooth equidimensional scheme. And more importantly, the name of uh, the number of reducible components of this guy will be the same of the number of reducible components of uh, this modular space of um, reflexive shift that I took. Uh, then, uh, since for any point in this Q, uh, the shift EX uh, taking the kernel of the epimorphism is stable, uh, and therefore defines a point inside the modular space, uh, we can prove that we have a well-defined modular morphism from this uh, scheme that I just have defined to the modular scheme of uh, to the modular space of reflexive shifts, just uh, associating to each point the associated shift, the associated uh, elementary transform. <coughs> it's clear that our morphism is embedding because uh, for every point in the image of this map, uh, we can reco recover the reflexive shift just taking the double dual of my shift and um, <coughs> we can recover the line and the set of points by, by taking the support of the quotient. And the morphism is just, the epimorphism is just the natural projection. Uh, so, indeed, we have produced with these um, families, uh, reducible families inside the modular space. Uh, and then now we consider X with these letters, the closure of this morphism psi inside the modular space. And uh, these reducible comp the reducible components of my tilde chi, I'm sorry for this, it's not of psi, are reducible families uh, of this modular space. So, uh, so far we have reducible families in order to prove that these are indeed reducible components and uh, we need to prove that for each point inside this uh, this guy that lives inside the modular space we have that the dimension of the tangent space coincides with the dimension of the variety x uh, and luckily for us indeed we can prove this so we can prove this equality and then we have the first result uh, that says that if i give uh, four in five integers uh, satisfying these properties that I said to you. Then this scheme X e is a dimensional, uh, is a dimensional of that, that dimension that is written here. And the number of reducible components uh, of this guy is the same as this of the dimension of uh, and the number of reducible components of X is the same of the name of the number of reducible components of my modular space of reflexive shifts. Uh, I should have put it here that indeed this guy uh, give us reducible components of the modular space. So sorry. Uh, the important thing that should remain from this discussion is that when I take a generic shift inside these reducible components, uh, that uh, this shift should fit into an exact sequence of this form that this shift should embed in uh, double dual V. This double dual, this E double dual, should be a, a, an element inside uh, the modular space of reflexive shifts with uh, chain classes E, N, and M. And the quotient will be, uh, <clears throat> the, the quotient will be isomorphic to uh, the structural shift of L twisted by R plus uh, the structural shift of S points. So the, the form of this guy will be important for us in what follows. Uh, we also can produce reducible components of uh, shifts 
uh, of zero dimension of singularity shifts uh, making a, sim a similar construction. And the important thing here is that uh, I will denote this, uh, these components by T. Uh, these components will lie inside the modular space with term classes E and M minus 2S. And whenever I take a generic element inside this, these components, uh, this element will, this shift will fix, will fit into an exact fixness of the following form, uh, where my, where S is a set of distinct, S distinct points inside P3 that does not meet any of singular, of the singular points of my reflexive shift. <coughs> okay. So, uh, I should add that now we have produced uh, examples of uh, shifts with uh, mixed singularities, with zero dimensional singularities. And of course, if we don't take any point in the previous construction, we also can uh, produce examples of shifts with one dimensional singularities. So we have all from the definition that I gave in the start of the talk, uh, we have produced examples of reducible, reducible components of all three kinds of shifts, or possible shifts. So the first application uh, is that uh, in the same way that uh, we have for uh, zero dimension for odd, uh, for first hand class even, we have for first hand class odd, that is that we have uh, infinitely number of components uh, of shifts Whenever the number of, uh, whenever the second chain class grows, we can have uh, uh, infinitely many, no, sorry, we have a very large number of uh, components with uh, generic point corresponding to uh, shifts, shifts that are zero dimensional, uh, with zero dimensional singularities, with shifts that have mixed singularities and with shifts that uh, have one dimensional similarities, pure one dimensional similarities. So uh, the result on the existence of reducible components help us to see that this modular space will be very complicated uh, when the second chain class grows. Unfortunately, uh, this does not give us uh, an asymptotic behavior for the number of reducible components. And we would like to know if these results can help us understand the geometry uh, of the modular space with the small chain class name. And here I will present uh, the study for the cases. Uh, I will fix the first chain class equal minus one, the second chain class equals two, and I will make the study for uh, every possible C-tree. Remember that in the beginning of the talk, I said that uh, the third chain class uh, respects uh, an inequality and this inequality uh, make all the possible chain classes for the second chain class equals two to be zero two and four i will begin <coughs> making some explaining some numerical invariants uh, so if we consider uh, a shift inside this modular space we will have that sequence that i just said because uh, if E is torsion free, then we can inject in its double dual and consider the quotient. And we have that the first chain class of the double dual coincides with the first chain class of my E. We have that the second chain class of the double dual is equals to the third second chain class minus the degree of the support of my sheath. And we also have this third equality. Uh, these three equalities mean that we have um, that the trend classes of the double dual uh, cannot be obtained in, fu in, in function of the trend class of my sheaf and the degree of the support of QE and the third trend class of QE. So our approach here will be by brute force. We are going to fix, mm -hmm. since we're fixed the trend class of E, we are going to study all the possible uh, cases for these other numbers that are free, meaning the second, uh, the chain class of our double dual and the degree of the support uh, in order to make the equality, these three equalities uh, hold. So chain proved that the, the modular space of reflexive shapes with this chain classes minus one, two, and four are, is reducible with dimension 11. 
and therefore the closure of this guy inside the modular space of, of torsion free shifts is a reducible component. And uh, now we take a point outside uh, the modular space of uh, reflexive, shift, reflexive shifts. And since we are assuming that E is inside this modular space, we know that it's semi-stable, but since the first sharing class is minus one, uh, we can prove that E is also stable, Giesecker stable. Uh, once E is stable, we have that the double duo is also stable. And by Bogomolov inequality, we have that the second turn class of the double duo should be uh, non-negative. And by the second equality that I just showed you, uh, we have that the degree of the support of the QE should be at most two. And with this, now we study all the possibilities for the degree for the degree of the support. If we start with the support uh, with degree two, we'll have that the C2 of the double duo should be zero since, uh, and since the double duo is a stable shift, we have that the, also the third chain class should be, should be zero. And then uh, we have that the double duo of our shift E should be all minus one uh, plus O, but this cannot occur since we know that the double duo is stable and this guy is not stable. So uh, we can't have in this situation uh, the degree of the support uh, to be two. Now, if the degree of the support is one, <clears throat> then uh, we know that also for the equality that I showed you, that C2 should be also one. And C3 of our double do should be also one. Then we know that our uh, shift, our reflexive shift, should lie inside this modular space R minus one, one, one. Uh, in this situation, we can see that our shift QE uh, can be obtained as extension of uh, this um, structural shift of the line twisted by some R and some maximal zero dimensional subshift of Kiwi supported in S points. And this will imply that uh, the other characteristic of our shift uh, for every twisted T here is T plus one plus R plus S. And computing the other characteristic here, we will have that minus one uh, should be minus two minus R minus S, so we make, just make the computation assuming that the other characteristic of our QB is like the form that I just said. And then we have the quality that minus R minus S equals to one. Remember that minus R is the twisted of the, the shift in the structural shift of the, the line. And S is just the number of points in the support. It's the length of the of my shift Z of the com of my shift Z, E, here. Now, uh, in order to have an epimorphism from double duo to my shift QAE, we must have that dr should be greater or equal than minus one. So if r is minus one, we have that s equals zero is the only possibility. Then we just prove that the QE is just the twisted, my structural shift of the line twisted by minus one. Uh, this means that we are looking for elementary transformations of F. Uh, this is minus one, 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 sorry, along lines in P3. Uh, now, we want to compute the dimension of the family of shifts that can be obtained as kernel of epimorphisms from this F to the structural shift of the line. But now we don't, uh, we have two situations essentially. If the line does not intersect the singular set of my shift F, of my reflection shift F, and then this is just uh, a family like this, that family X that I said before. And we can compute the dimension of the family just with the formula that we already have and this dimension is seven, which is too small to fill out a reducible component of my modular space. Uh, it 
here I, I highlight that the any reducible component in the modular space uh, should be should have an expected dimension, which is eight times the second term class minus in this case five, and which in seven is smaller than this equality than this quantity. But different from the case where the singularity of my shift does not meet the line, we also have the case when the singularity meets the line, and we have to find another way to compute the dimension of this family. We have to construct a family satisfying these properties and then compute the dimension of this family. And again, the dimension of this family is seven by coincidence. This couldn't be another number. And again, this is too small to fill out and reduce the component of the modular space we are considering here. Uh, then, indeed, we find when the degree of the support is one, we indeed we find uh, sheaves that can appear, but the family of the sheaves is too small uh, to be a reducible component of my guy, of my modular space. Uh, and now we go to the next possible number for the degree, which is zero. If the degree of my support is zero, then my shift supported just in S points, and I have that the third chain class is equal of my double dual is uh, the third chain class of my shift E uh, plus 2S. But this is greater than C3 of E. Uh, but this will contradict the stability of my shift because we will have that the third chain class of the double dual is greater than the second chain class square. And this cannot happen. The third term class should be always smaller or equal than C3 square. C2 square. And indeed, this proves uh, that the modular space of uh, <coughs> of uh, torsion free shifts, rank two torsion free shifts, gives the same stable, uh, is isomorphic to the closure of my uh, modular space of reflexive shifts. And therefore, this guy is reducible with dimension 11. Uh, this was also proved by Schmidt in 2019 using another techniques, independently by him. Uh, OK, now, we also have the result for second turn class equals, for third turn class equals to two. And now we have uh, two reducible components. The first one will be the closure of the reflexive shifts. And the new one appearing here is uh, our component T of uh, zero dimensional singularity shifts that will have dimension 15. And additionally, uh, this modular space is connected. Mm, this is the uh, more interesting information, I believe here. And uh, I will give just an idea how to, to prove it. Uh, we know by our first result in, for in this talk that uh, the component T is a reducible component. And Cheng proved that, uh, again, that this modular space of reflexive shifts is reducible with dimension 11. Then the closure will be another reducible component in the modular space. And we can prove by inspection, and more or less in the same that we just did for the case with third term class equals four that these are the only possible reducible components. And now I will give an idea how we can prove that this modular space is connected. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, uh, we consider a flat family of curves in P3 with base A1. That means we are taking a subscheme of P3 times A1 with, together with a projection satisfying these following properties. Uh, any point in A1 different from zero, I want my fiber <clears throat> to be a disjoint union of two lines. And in the zero fiber, I want um, my Z0 scheme to be the union of two distinct lines meeting at one point P, that I will call P. And I want this point to have, uh, I didn't write this here, but I want this point to have, uh, to be embedded. I want 
this part to be to have multiplicity too. Uh, this means that I, for my scheme Z0, I will have an exact sequence of this form uh, OP that goes inside your Z0, that goes in the reduced, uh, the structural shift of the reducible, the reduced scheme. Uh, okay, I just said that I can find this family. Uh, the clue for this is that uh, both uh, these schemes ZT and this scheme Z0 have the same genus and degree. Since we know that Hibbert scheme of curves is connected, we should be able to find uh, a flat family like this, this. But indeed, we can actually make a, a flat family. We can build this morphism in order to prove that we did we have this deformation. So uh, I'm not saying that just the degree and the genus to be uh, the same in both cases is enough, but this should be a good indicative that we can find such family. I would denote by the ideal of my scheme Z, calligraphic Z inside P3 times A1 to be my ideal shift of Z. And I can prove that, we can prove that it's possible uh, to find a non-trivial extension of uh, OP3 times A1 shifts of my ideal shift of the ideal of Z uh, to all minus one uh, box times OA1, with that will give me a family E in the middle. Uh, the important stuff here uh, is that my shift E will be flat over A1. And by construction for any T inside uh, A1, the restriction will give me a short exact sequence uh, of this form appearing here for you. Uh, where my ET will be the restriction of my bold E to P3 times T. Uh, and this will give us a modular morphism from A1 to the modular space M minus 1 to 2 that as we will assign to, for each T my shift ET. The nice thing here is that we can check uh, by diagram chasing that. Uh, in the zero, uh, the the shift is zero uh, is a shift inside that reducible that uh, component t minus one two four one. That is, it's a shift uh, whose support is just one point. And for every t different from zero, we can prove that uh, the shift appearing in that exact sequence here is a reflexive shifts re reflexive shift in R minus two two. Uh, that means that the geography of our modular space should be at least of this form. It should be a cross. Uh, why should I say should be at least is because we don't know if uh, this phi zero uh, that we proved that is in the intersection of the closure of R minus one two two uh, is the only possible intersection. We this. this we can have more intersections. But we know that phi zero lie in the closure of R minus one to two and also lie in the components of the, the these T components that I just defined. Uh, and additionally, we can also prove that the modular space minus one to zero <coughs> uh, has exactly four reducible components we can prove that these components are all rational. And additionally, we can prove that this guy is connected. Um, this modular space with third chain class equals zero is uh, of particular interest because uh, it is the closure, is the compactification of the modular space of vector bundles on P3. And as you see, for a smaller, num for a smaller third chain class, uh, more complicated the modular space becomes. And we also, I will not prove this theorem here. I will just make the geography of this guy here. So I have one component, which is the closure of the modular space of local free shifts. And I have two T components. That means that I have two components uh, whose uh, key we is supported on zero dimensional schemes. And I have one component X, uh, 
uh, with dimension 11, this component whose QA is supported on OL, on a line, and po possible points. <coughs> and we know that these T components intersect the components of the vector bundles. And we know that the T2 component, the one of the T components intersect my X components, but we do not know if the X components intersect with the component of the modular space of uh, vector bundles. Uh, I also would like to add that uh, the intersection of uh, components with uh, the components of torsion, purely torsion free sheaves with the components with vector bundles is interesting to study this point of intersection uh, because in some sense we are studying those shifts that can be dissimilarized. We can make them, we can deform them in vector bundles and then they will lose their similarities. Uh, so this is one of interests in studying this stuff. And the other interesting is because, uh, well, we know a lot of stuff about the Hilbert scheme of curves, for instance, and we'd like to know a little bit more about this modular space. Uh, with this, I believe I was a little too fast, but uh, I finished my, my presentation here. And thank you and stay safe. Okay, Charles, uh, thank you. Let's thank the, the speaker. And, uh, okay, great, thanks. Uh, so, are there any questions? Remember to turn on your microphone if you have questions. Hi, may, may I ask a question? Are, are you listening to me? Yes, uh, could you speak louder a bit? Let's, oh, I can turn the volume. Please, on. okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, it's just a simple question. I mean, do, uh, are there natural projective embeddings of these components? Where do they, where do they sit naturally? Uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't check that. Um, this is a good question, but we didn't check that. I mean, it would be interesting to know that, but we don't know. We do not know. More questions? I, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Maybe it was, maybe it's a stupid question. I'm sorry, but you are constructing all your families through elementary transformations, right? Yes. How do you know that these are all the possibilities? For, uh, okay, you say, for instance, in the case minus one. You, to you two have torsion for, free yeah. shifts of churn classes, and you're starting from reflexive shift, taking elementary transformation and considering all the torsion shifts, right? Torsion free shifts, yes. sorry. Yes, no, this, this is you, a good question. How do you know you don't have other techniques? No, it could be have, you could have another techniques to, to, to find the reducible components, but in the case for small second chain classes, uh, in this, this case that I showed you, you will just have that component. And the way to prove it is by taking your hands in the dirt, you should, uh, Start with a ref, uh, with a torsion free shift, and or either prove that it lies in one of uh, its. You should prove that any torsion free shift that you take it's in the closure of the two that I said. And okay. You do so it yeah, by. If you also to see that it's torsion free. It's, it's constructed as the transformation you described. Yes. Yes. But only for a small second chain class. We don't know if this is true for a greater one. You should. Uh, we, we, we d indeed, in the case for M minus one to two, I said, oh, these families are too small. Indeed, we make a deformation for the components to in one of, uh, for a shift in one of our components to that uh, shift. Okay. Thank you. No questions? So I have a question actually, which must say similar to that of Simonis. Uh, if you pick a sheaf E, which is a general in its irreducible component, do you have any expectation for Q of E? This no. Part of that is there any bound on 
some no 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 the the, the only thing that we know for a general shift is that uh, I will I am showing I will you can see the slides yes yes yeah the the only thing that is general for any shift uh, is these three equalities here uh, yeah most there. Uh, just a minute. Uh, yeah, the, the the only thing that is general is these three equalities. You, you don't know anything more than that. So even for general E, this QE could be very nasty, uh, very supportive yes. on the curves of uh, higher genus or have non-reduced points or... Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And indeed, th th this is one of the main uh, difficulties in proving that this guy is connected, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, because uh, the, the QE could be very, very nasty. Okay. Okay. And another question that I had is: uh, Okay, you have this shift QE. Its annihilator is the support of uh, the singularities of E, right? Where E fails to be locally free. Yes. But you can also use some fitting ideal for that. Are they mm. the same? Uh, I didn't thought about it, but uh, yes. But if you use so, the fitting ideal, you may lose uh, some information about the... You don't want to lose the information about the embedded points. Right, yeah. The fitting ideal gives you the sub-scheme, not the sheaf on top of that. So I'm asking whether it's containing that information or not, or it's an extra uh, information. Okay, D this is a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should I should verify this. Yes. Okay. Maybe, maybe yeah. If if the, all the information is contained, the fitting ideal. Uh, okay. I, I would think about it. Yeah, yeah the, it the will be. is related to a presentation of your sheet. Yeah, it's the other way around, right? Embed your sheet in a reflexive one. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That. Oh, okay. I'm just asking. But, uh, okay. All right. Uh, any more questions? Okay. So uh, let's uh, thank Charles again. Then. Okay. <laughs> So uh, I should stop the recording, but I'm, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> At some point it will work. But uh, well, let, let me thank all of you and say that next week we're going to have uh, Jorge Vitorio Pereira as the speaker. And uh, the link will be announced uh, soon. OK, so thank you, Charles, for the talk. And thank you all for listening to it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Take, take care. Bye. Take care, everyone. Obrigado. Tchau, tchau, gente. Obrigada, Charles. Valeu. Valeu. Tchau, tchau. Falou, pessoal. Tchau, tchau. 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 tchau.